You probably already know about Japan's super fast Shinkansen bullet trains. But do you also know about its strange spin-off, the Mini Shinkansen, that goes from speeding along at 250 km per hour to coming down to a snail's pace while navigating classic mountain railways? Join me for this trip through stunning Japan as we explore the strange and interesting history behind Japan's high-speed little brother. Our journey today will start from the heart of Japan's high-speed rail network at Tokyo Station. It's a beautiful morning for some train travel, so let's head inside the station. Tokyo Station is one of the largest railway station complexes in the world, with six main exit and entry points, so make sure you get here in plenty of time if you are not familiar with the station. This is the Marunouchi South entrance, which is mostly formed of the historic station building that has nicely been integrated to the new development around the station and the rest of the station complex. It's nice to see such an old building well integrated into a modern railway hub. By the gate line, you will find facilities such as toilets and ticket machines. Here you can both purchase tickets if you haven't acquired one already, or if you're traveling on a JR pass like I am today, you can collect your seat reservations here. Simply just press the English button, and if you're on a pass, press the Japan Rail Pass button, and follow the on-screen instructions. Scan your ticket, enter your passport number, Select the reservations you want to collect and the machine will spit them out down below. And now we're ready to go and catch the train. Simply insert your rail pass or ticket into the gate line and we're ready to go. Make sure to pay attention to the signage as there is a lot of platforms here in Tokyo Station, so it's easy to get lost. We will be of course heading for the Shinkansen. Inside the gate lines you will find pretty much every shop you could ever imagine. Including this Danish Japanese bakery chain with the best name. The pastries are actually really really good, do try them out if you see one. But if pastries are not your thing, there's so much other good food here that you can bring on the train. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Following along the signs for the Shinkansen, you'll eventually end up at the entrance for the Shinkansen platforms. The platforms are behind a separate entry gate, so make sure to have your pass or ticket ready again, as you'll need to show it at the gate line. Right, time to consult the departure board and find out which platform or train will be leaving from. The displays alternate between Japanese and English, so just wait a bit if it's showing in Japanese. We are catching the 856 train, which is a combined Yamabiko and Tsubasa service bound for Sendai and our destination Yamagata. The train will be leaving from track 20, so let's head to the platform, which conveniently is located right next to the gate line. Shinkansen trains depart as often as every 4 minutes from Tokyo Station, so there's always plenty of activity going on. This is one of the E5 series trains, heading for Shinamoi. We are however catching one of the E3 series Shinkansen, Built by Kawasaki and Tokyo from 1995 onwards, they can reach speeds of up to 275 km per hour. Our train is attached to an E2 series train, forming the Yamabiko part of our service. This will be detached in Fukushima and continue on its own to Sendai. 
To fit on the classic railway line, the E3 series is a lot smaller than regular Shinkansen trains. Just look at the doorstep. The displays on the train as well as stickers help you locate your car. So let's go find ours. I'll be traveling in the green car today, which is equivalent to first class on board JR's trains. This service is all reserved seating, meaning you must have a reserved seat ticket and sit in your assigned seat. Which today for me is this one. As you'd expect, we depart Tokyo right on time. Our train will make a brief stop at Ueno a few moments later. But with the journey now well underway, let's take a closer look at route map for today's journey. We are traveling in Subasa 129, which has a Yamabiko service attached to the back of the consist. After Tokyo and Ueno, we'll make stops at Omiya. Utsunomiya, Koyama, Fukushima, where the Yamabiku services detaches. Our train will continue stopping at Yonasawa, Akayu, Kamnio Yama Onsen, and Yamagata, while the Yamabiku runs non stop to Sendai. The trip from Tokyo to Yamagata is scheduled to take 2 hours and 41 minutes to cover a distance of 343 kilometers, giving the train an average speed of 128 kilometers per hour. With us well on the way, let's take a look at the onboard comfort. The seats feature a comfortable adjustable headrest pillow, as well as seat controls in the armrest. At the seat you will find a nice sturdy tray table, that's more than big enough to fit a laptop, a cup holder, as well as a storage net. There's also power outlets, one for every seat. And in the armrest you will also find another smaller table, useful for drink. The seats feel like a big reclining armchair, really comfortable, good job JR. And now that we are at it, let me show you around the train. This up here is the green car, which there's only one of on board this train. In the vestibules is where you will find the toilets, which is slightly different to trains in Western Europe, with the sinks usually being out in the vestibule rather than inside the actual toilet. Continuing further down, we get to the ordinary car, which is also laid out in a 2 plus 2 layout, with comfortable armchairs. As with all Shinkansen trains in Japan, the seats rotate to face the direction of travel on every departure. I have to say, here the standard class seats really look great. The rest of the train is also laid out with more standard seats like this. So let's do a toilet review instead. As mentioned, the sink you will find in the vestibule, but right next to it you will either find a urinal for the men, or if you need to go number two, there's also a proper toilet. This one is the accessible kind. I decided to head back to my seat and just enjoy the views as we speed along at 275 km per hour. I got myself one of the many bento boxes offered on sale at Tokyo Station. It may not quite be a dining car, but this is still pretty good. Arriving into Fukushima, this is where we will detach the rear part of our train. Unfortunately, it's impossible to film the detachment progress and still make the same mini Shinkansen service. But, I did catch the attachment process on my way back to Tokyo.
As we depart from Fukushima, we will leave the Shinkansen part of the line and head onto the local O main line. This is done using a small connecting elevated curve of track that takes us down to the classic main line bound for Yamagata. Meaning we will now run at much lower speeds, only up to a maximum of 130 km per hour. Japan's classic railway lines are built to a narrower gauge than their modern Shinkansen lines. This meant in order for this line to get Shinkansen trains on it, the line had to be modified to fit the slightly larger trains, as well as the track gauge changed to the wider Shinkansen one. This was done because it was deemed a more economical way to get Shinkansen services to lesser populated regions without having to construct new dedicated tracks and stations, which drives up construction costs. In total, two of these mini Shinkansen services exist, both coming off the Tohoku Shinkansen, with ores bound for Yamagata and Shinyo, and further north, the one bound for Akita. And as you can clearly see here as we make our way across the Itayatoke mountain pass, the construction of new base tunnels and bridges for a high-speed line through this terrain would be very expensive. We eventually clear the pass, and continue through the quaint Japanese countryside till we eventually start approaching Yamagata. I quite enjoyed my ride on the Mini Shinkansen. The train is comfortable, and I personally think this is a great way to bring direct fast journeys to Tokyo to smaller cities at a reasonable cost. Sure, the train is not quite high speed for the entire journey, but it beats running at 130 km all the way, any day, which is the maximum speed of the narrow Japanese classic railway lines. To travel from Tokyo to Yamagata on the Shinkansen, it's a fixed fare, if you're not using a rail pass, of 11,250 yen for a reserved seat in an ordinary car, or an extra 3,660 yen for a seat in the green car. And here we are, arriving into Yamagata on time at 11.37. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I try to upload a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at InterCitySimon. I usually post live from my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching.